when you're when you're doing a squat, you lock your chest, right? Your chest is locked. I'm not gonna. You probably a better technique. Than, but I, I imagine you don't, you know, squat like like this. Oh my god. So that's that whole left side there. It doesn't even look like a back. There we go. Whoa. You're right. No. That was amazing. <laughs>so you do you do weightlifting right yeah you've done that since you were 18 yes 18 and and then you said last March so about a year ago or so you had an injury where mm -hmm. you leg went out slipped on some water mm -hmm. can you describe and just sort of show me what happened a little bit for everybody to see yeah yeah so like when I basically there was a puddle of water and I just like slipped out this way and like completely fell to four. I felt my like pelvis kind of like crack. It felt like really stiff. It was mainly like the bone, like the ischial tuberosity mm -hmm. region. Um, that's when I felt like, like the most. Um, but yeah, it was definitely pulled for sure. And that lasted for a couple months, but then if you said a few months later, some new symptoms arrived. What did you? Yeah, so um, I kind of ignored it, never got help. Um, definitely when I was working out, still didn't feel normal. I felt like it was just continually getting more knottier. Mm -hmm. My muscles, like my glutes and my adductor, and even like my quads. Um, and then I woke up one day after working out with like body-wide muscle twitches. Mm -hmm. um, Arms, legs, everything was yeah. kind of like, and he showed me a video of it, it was just kind of, the muscles were just fasciculating. fasciculating. Yeah, they're just spasming. And that's gone on from the two months after that fall till now, yeah. pretty much hasn't changed. Yeah, like even now I can feel like muscle twitches, like it'll come and go, like I can never predict where mm -hmm. it is. Um, like they're in my arms. The arms and legs. My back like my neck, my chest, like pretty much everywhere. And the treatment you've gone through, give me a little bit of just what they're doing. You, know, you said you went to a physical therapist. Yeah, so finally um, I have a really good physical therapist that I've been seeing since January. She dry needled my, well she's still dry needling my quad, my adductor, and like my entire glute. Okay. And that honestly has helped. It's taken away like a lot of the pain. Okay. Um, but nobody's checked your back. Nobody's. No one's touched my back <laughs> or my upper body. So I definitely feel like stiff. Yeah. You had an MRI and they said nothing really was, nothing they could tell, but it was taken laying down, yeah, laying right? Yeah, laying down. And, you know, just a little bit, when you take a laying down MRI, the discs are made of water, about 70, 80% water, and think of it like a flat tire. If you have a flat tire and you lift the car in the air, the tire might not look as flat because there's not as much gravity on it. I used to squat like 180. I would do hip thrusts that were like 300 pounds. Like I've lost 25 pounds of weight. Like I'm very, like tiny. But then I just gained it back in fat, you know. <laughs> that's how it works. Well, that's a lot of that's a lot of pressure on the disc, yeah. and especially when you're, you know, like I was showing you earlier, you know, when you when you're when you're doing a squat, you lock your chest, right? Your chest is locked. I'm not gonna. You probably a better technique, than, but I, I imagine you don't, you know, squat like like this. <laughs> you kind of keep your chest locked, right, in yeah, that motion, yeah. and it would be really poor technique to have mobility of your chest when you're doing a squat. So my point is that. When you were a child, through school, most of that is sitting. Your chest doesn't really need to move that much. You're in a desk, rounded forward. We go to weightlifting when you started when you were 18, or then you have an injury. Did you have an injury at 16 or something? What happened? So there? I never had any injury until I took a break mm -hmm. um, from weightlifting because of the pandemic and whatnot. Right. And then I kind of restarted, and I just never felt the same. It felt so off. But during that time, I was pretty sedentary because I was like studying for things and whatnot. So the nerves that come out of your back control all your muscles. And mm -hmm. when we have fasciculations, you're dealing with some level of nerve pressure. The nerve is either reaching what we call its threshold. So nerves work by a thing called resting membrane potential and then an action potential. So we, uh, when the nerve is supposed to rest down here and then as it's irritated, it'll finally reach the threshold and fire. And so you're reaching that firing point and there's many things that can sensitize a nerve and bring it closer to that firing point where you have the fasciculation. You can have trauma, you can have stress, which we've had a lot of the last couple of years. <laughs> you can have um, dietary, so you know, sometimes you, know, you don't smoke or drink or no. cough. You know, even, even coffee though, some of the caffeine, nicotine, they, they sensitize nerves, make things fire a little more. Um, so we call them the three T's in chiropractic, thoughts, traumas, toxins. Uh, your traumas, falling, that brings it up to a, you know, you already had some pressure, but then it finally got over the threshold because you had a fall. Uh, you have your mind, depression, stress, worry, and then you have things you put in your body, your diet, you know, the, all the things you can't get out of your body. All of those affect a nerve and make it either fire more easily, and that's when you're finally, 
the straw that broke the camel's back. Now we're noticing, hey, Ed, I got my whole body is, is involved here. The mobility of your spine is what washes your spine, keeps your spine clean, and that's because you've never been, in, I mean, your first chiropractor, there's a thing called a lordosis, which is that arch that your lower back should have. That arch takes a lot of the weight of your spine and spreads it out over all the segments. When we lose that arch, like a ladder, all the weight just goes right down to the bottom. And so the last two segments in your lower back are a part of the nerve roots that comprise your sciatic nerve. So the sciatic nerve is 75% of your leg, but even because it's affecting your arms, we have the whole spine we need to clean, mm -hmm. and we're going to go through that. Okay, not too bad. Your head's actually only a little bit forward. Actually pretty well lined up there. aren't too unlevel. You know, I think it's just rigidity. Wow, a lot of power back here. You know, you got a lot of, if you feel my back. Wow, that's so much nicer. It should be soft. Your back has like a, I it's feel like, yeah, like, like that. Has, it's, it's literally like, like permanent. Like that's how I feel like all my muscles feel permanently contracted. Just tight. Like they won't just um, like relax. <laughs> And that's partly, you know, posture a little bit, but mostly I'm saying like probably guarding. You know, your body's yeah. protecting, you've had these traumas, and now as a result or as an uh, effect of having an injury, your body expects you to have another injury. So it puts everything into quarantine and lockdown, mm -hmm. expecting another fall. And then let all the air out, exhale, let it all go. Deep breath in for me. Let the head back, exhale, let all the air out. Deep breath in, then let all the air out. Chin down, exhale, let all the air out. A little bit there, okay. Put your hand around your belly for me, okay. All right, take a deep breath in for me. Exhale for me, exhale, I got you. There we go. Other oh, side for me, beautiful. There we go, not gonna fall, I promise. Bring your arm back for me. Deep, deep breath in for me, and exhale. Let's go face that for me, beautiful. All right, just relax your neck, I got you. Wow, just everything's in, <laughs> and just uh, breathe, breathe, let it go. Yeah, we have some injuries in here. You have older brothers or siblings? What's I have a younger that? brother. Younger brother, okay. What, what were your hobbies when in single digit years? Did you do dance or? Yeah, I was a dancer, I was a basketball player, I was a tennis player, I did cross country. Okay. A lot yeah. of sports. <laughs> Just trying to get, I'm feeling a lot of just. Yeah, yeah, I can feel that. Stuff, stuff's happened. It's like I'm running my hand down the door of a car and there's lots of dents and dings and I'm going, what happened here? You're too young to have a lot of, feel this big bone sticking out yeah, here. I yeah, I feel that. Yeah, everything's tilted to one side. Your head likes to tilt left. You know, all this, all the right side's all sticking right, out yeah. right here. This big bump right here. All right. Just breathe. I'm just gonna open it up a little bit. There you go. Turn your left, real gentle. Very baby adjustment here. It's okay. It's okay. Here we go. There you go. Mm. I know. I liked it. Yeah, it kind of feels good. You like. did, <laughs> yeah, you did great. Real gentle. I got your head. Let me have it here. There you go. All right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought my neck could move like that. It sounded good. So your upper neck is supposed to be the main engine, meaning that it's supposed to do most of the work and it's supposed to arrive to the job site <laughs> the earliest. If the upper neck feels tight, then there has to be another part of your neck that has to make up for one area doing less, right? So there has to be, if there's an underworked area, there has to be an overworked area. And the lower neck typically is that overworked area in that we see a lot of C5, C6, C7, the lower neck vertebrae the discs are aging at a faster rate. But even before this disc injury that can be measurable on an MRI, you'll have inflammation. And it's not something that we can detect with x-ray or MRI until it gets to like a threshold level or a severe enough level where we can go, oh yeah, there's definitely inflammation. The neck is supposed to be curved, let your chin up, you know, way back here is where your neck belongs. This is the lordosis that isn't, doesn't probably feel natural. <laughs> Not at all. Right, so it's 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 a foreign position because, but this is where you used to be when you were a single digit age, and because it wasn't valued, we lost it. Your your default is like letting your chin down. We gotta let your chin go up. 
how to get your neck used to being, there you go. Yeah, the, the nerves that go down in your arm all come from that same C5, 6, and 7 area. We call it the brachial plexus, is forms off the nerve roots that leave the lower neck, and that essentially can cause or is causing the fasciculations or one of the pieces of components that are causing the nerves to reach their threshold. Wow, just, yeah, everything's just walls, fortresses. I'll work on this a little bit more face down than I wanted to get a preview of it. Probably the best would be to have her sit and we'll go wash on her sitting. is the gua sha, just a way to get blood into the areas that are stiff, help, yeah, you're good, yeah, there you go, perfect. Just look straight, look straight forward and your chin down a little bit for me. There you go, perfect. It's all coming out, you're doing great. It's gonna be more on the right side. Probably looks so satisfying. Can you, can you feel that, can you feel yeah. that right there? Rotator cuff issues? No. Mm -hmm. But I, wow. I might. <laughs> that's a lot of tension here in your supraspinatus right here. It's a lot of. Yeah. That's all right there is you know, the rotator cuff muscle, and he's your primary one that gets injured. And the tighter it gets, the more it keeps the tendon taut like a rope, and then it becomes easy to tear the tendon. I get like shoulder clicking now. That's never happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is you got the cables all tight and then things you know, bones are gonna click over the tendons. It's a lot of tight tension right here. It's because I'm powerful, Ed. Yes. 180 pounds. Yes. Alright. I couldn't move the next day, Ed. It's okay. <laughs> she lets the like problem for tomorrow, right? 180 pounds. I bet she's gonna sort of right. <laughs> It's a problem for the mom. I like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. All right, fair enough. Got a recording. Uh huh. There we go. All right. This is the channel that the nerves all go through to get to your arm. And you said even goosebumps, you kind of had the same thing, right? It was like tingling a little yeah. bit too. Like here, this arm, if I go like this, Sometimes I get like electrocuted here. That's that's called almost like a tunnel sign, meaning the nerve is just really easy to get to threshold. You know, it's not good that it does that. Just the nerve is really sensitive to even mechanical pressure. And you know, I relate it to right here. This is what begins disc injury, and then inflammation in this channel is the first thing that starts to bring a nerve closer to that firing point in the absence of stress and diet and all those other things we talked about. But, um, yeah, we gotta stretch. We're gonna do this two birds with one stone in the end of a visit. We're gonna have you stretching your arms back different angles, but we're gonna try to that. stretch your shoulders back. It's more that your shoulders just kind of rotated and that does hide some of the forward, right? Because if my head if my head's forward, my shoulders round forward. You see how it still lines up? Yeah. But it's if I unrotated your shoulders, the head would then appear more. So you kind of sneaky. Thing. Yeah, it's a little more sneaky with this one. When I bring your shoulders back, there's a little rotation here, just because you know, strengthen your abdomen and pecs. Everything's sort of more anteriorly rotated. Right there, that's a lot of tension right there. I feel that. I shouldn't kind of crunch like that. All right. Yeah, it's not that much on this side. Feel the difference? Mm -hmm. That right side, you got all that. Yeah, even like down my shoulder, but like like here, uh -huh. I feel like how tight it is, and even my like triceps. 
Yeah, this is not bad on the left. The mark always represents something that usually I can feel, something you'll feel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> usually my black belt patients will tell me where the marks will come out because they're like, Ed, I can feel it trapped in there. And kind of extends out to her shoulder here, but this is the rotated, anteriorly rotated shoulder. It'll eventually lead to rotator cuff, supraspinatus injury, and you're young enough that you know, we haven't gotten there, but let's not let's not go there. Yeah, let's, let's not. not. How about we not go down that path of tearing a rotator cuff? But this is all raised up more on the left, meaning it's more misaligned, and it's you're essentially tilting away from this left side. Did they say anything about the ovaries in terms of the sideness? Was one different than the other? Are they both the same again? Or hard to say? Um. I forget when they did the imaging one thing sitting. It's been a while. I wouldn't be surprised if the left is worse, what I'm trying to say. This mm -hmm. this is more blockaded over here. Right here is where the nerve endings that leave your spinal column that transmit the intelligence from your brain to your ovaries. So if this channel is inflamed, the organs, all of them, your kid it'll be your kidneys next. Does that make sense? They're <laughs> your Crohn's disease and your transverse colon. The organs are all listening to the teleprompter, <laughs> they're all reading the teleprompter that the brain writes. The organs don't have any self-intelligence and their dysfunction isn't their fault, it's the communication lines are breaking down. Kind of the peak of your misalignment is right here. Breathe for me. I'm going too hard, is this too easy? Yeah, you can go harder. Harder, okay, all right, I'm just learning you. All right, here we go. Please give me some sort of sign if I'm going too hard, okay? Yeah, yeah. Let yeah. your chin go up for me a little bit, okay? There you go. Put your head on. There we go. Let's see how your neck is used to tucking your chin down? I know. <laughs> we got to start retraining you a little bit, letting it be okay that your chin is up. All right, fair enough. She said, she said, let me have it, so, okay. I want to be way down this level. That's how there should be no pain, which I'm sure, Ed, I don't. <laughs> that doesn't feel the best. That trap thing right there is just... More rough up here. Uh-huh, right there. Levator scapula attachments. And these are the roots of your neck. Right there. Oh, that's it. Oh, man. She is tough. Doing good. Right there. Try to breathe, breathe in your nose. There you go, keep breathing, don't hold your breath. Just powerful diaphragm. This is where your diaphragm attaches in here. You know, years of lifting and, and exercise, you just, this is why we're trying to exhale. I imagine you already know this, right? When you're, when you're lifting, you try to yeah. <laughs> not <laughs> hold your diaphragm tight. You wanna be exhaling to relax the diaphragm as you're lifting so you don't further tighten this middle part of your back down. We call it a valsalva and that's what eventually causes disc injury. We want to not have all that inter-abdominal pressure. Okay. Tell my neck just always wants to go down. <laughs> I'm like, okay, correct myself now. Just letting it be okay that it's up. I mean, it's, it's okay if you have to the joints in your spine have a lot of feeling, and that's what you're doing when you bring your chin up, is you're putting weight onto more sensitive structures. And the opposite is the disc has no feeling. So it's why kids slouch and why it's just kind of generally more comfortable to round forward. I think she's fibbing a little bit. I had no previous deep tissue work. Okay. It's not terrible. Like. I think she's tough. Or just, she's okay, all right. It's like going to a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, like, you know, match and not have, oh, I've never had any training. Yeah, you just put me in a triangle. How in the world have you had no training? I mean, oh yeah, it just came natural. I just <laughs> naturally know how to do backflips and. Mm -hmm.
I think after the dry needling, I'm like, okay. This isn't too bad. Wow. Okay. Alright. See if I can outmatch that. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oof. That's a spot. Alright. I found a spot. Okay. Right there. Keep going back to it because I don't like it. <laughs> don't like that spot at all. Can you feel the less misalignment over here? Can you tell the difference? Is it, is it perceivable to you? I'm just curious. Which side? So like this side's side? much yeah, worse. <laughs> <laughs> much more raised up. The misalignment or subluxation is much less on this side. This will be the abused side, but the left is your locked side. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's more symptoms on this side because this is the mechanically overstressed side, but there's definitely some, I'm not saying it's perfect, there's definitely restriction over here, but it's about half the size of the, of the left. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. okay. Well, it's all coming out, it's pouring out of you, so <laughs> making sure you're okay. He just beat up that poor little girl and <laughs> didn't even ask her if she was okay. It's okay, I asked for it. <laughs> all right, all right. That's the supraspinatus tension I was feeling earlier, right there. You're fine. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, you're good. It's quite a better scapula, a little bit coming down, but mainly supra. Yeah, the fasciculations, all of that is nerve sensitization, nerve irritation that makes the nerve just. Now it's just on all the time. Now it's just fasciculating, and I can't stop it. Well, let's get your back clean, go home, and after this, go Epsom salt bath. Mm -hmm. That'll drink a little extra water. Get all this acidity out of your back, and oh, hey, that's all gone. And then the next secret's gonna be, how do I ever, how do I keep it from ever coming back? Which is through getting adjusted, massage, stretching, all those components are ways of keeping your spine. What we're seeing here is what you're gonna see in a second when I show you the picture. This is all, I call it dirt. <laughs> it's like <laughs> plaque on your teeth or you know, a dirty car maybe is another analogy. This is all internal acidity that 
is cellular exhaust. The nerves have to travel and journey through this area. The tightness is what traps it. So when an area is tight for a long period of time from injury and guarding, it blocks the, it congests the internal flow. Do people my age normally turn? Like if they've this? never had a lot of care, yes. Yeah, it's it's typical for if you've never had you know adjustments or deep tissue work, it's likely that the car is dirty kind of idea. If you've never had a car, had your back cleaned. But no, it's not normal. It's common, but not normal. Those words are confused, I think, in America. Yeah. <laughs> we make them almost synonymous when they're not. Common and normal are not the same thing. It's common to see car doors at Publix that have door dents in them. <laughs> it's not normal. The car didn't come from the factory dented. It, something happened to it. And I almost want to just work on your left side for like a handful of this <laughs> to get this side to level out, and then we can take them both. But I know we're here for this today, so I'm going to give as much as I can. But that's this is so bad right here. Definitely way worse. Yeah, just, I work both sides at the same time. You go, yeah, <laughs> it's all pumped up over here. Nothing over here relative. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Back face down for me. Okay. This is the joint we adjusted on your side called the sacroiliac joint. Mm -hmm. You said your ischial tuberosity. How, how sore is all this in here? Any, any lingering soreness in there? It's not too bad. Compare that to. No. Same or? Yeah, uh -huh. pretty much the same. Uh -huh. I got dry needle there, so honestly, like. So they clean this all out pretty they good. They pretty clean, like. Mm -hmm. Good. At least 100 needles. <laughs> yeah, I think. And everything, like I said earlier, everything replaces in here pretty well. What doesn't replace is discs and nerves, and that's kind of what I want to focus on today is getting those areas some relief. Sore there? Are you good there too? It's not too bad. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if you had if you had attachments that were torn, still, you wouldn't be letting me do this. Mm -hmm. yeah, this would be unbearable. You know. So what's what we're left with is the spinal column. And Take a deep breath in for me. We're gonna gentle. Here we go. Exhale. You all right? I right, breathe. Exhale. There we go. Breathe. You all right? Mm -hmm. Exhale. All right, piece of cake. Okay. There we go. Nice. Breathe. Breathe for me. Exhale. We're going to tilt this way a little bit. I got you. You're actually relaxed. There we go. There we go. Whoa. You 
All right? Yeah. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Breathe. That was amazing. Exhale. Good. I think we got it all in that first one. You all right? Yeah. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> really cool. That, yeah. <laughs> that was cool. I pushed all those ribs in. We're actually like, I got you. Here, I'll do it. Butterfly stretch? Yeah. Is there pain when you do that? Um, show a me. little. Show it's, it's from anteriorly rotated hips. I mean, Brenda will show you another way. She'll do it like, you know. Oh, the frog. The frog. Yeah. That's another way to do it. But tree pose, you know, like this. But the, the point is that when we sit for long periods of time, the hips rotate anteriorly and you've lost your ability to externally rotate the hip socket. Yeah. Just not a position we bring our hips in in normal day life. And so you have to work on that. That's part of, I don't think the cause of fasciculations, but something that's good for your hip sockets in the long term anyway. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, try not to get your earrings. Go ahead and tilt your head to the left a little bit for me. There you go. Ooh. You all right? Yeah. Be good. Go ahead and tilt your head to the left for me. Left. That's okay. Good. Okay. Okay. Huh? <laughs> okay. Well, I got you. Try not to get your earrings. There we go. Tilt your head to the right for me. There we go. There we go. Tilt your head. Okay. All right, very good. How do you stop like your pelvis from like clicking? Because that's like one thing I notice a lot. Like sometimes I'll walk and then. That's from that anterior rotation. Really? Right? So that's because you can't. What's happening? Because the tendons are all held tight, first of all, the, there's tension in there that's not supposed to be there. And then because the hip is in the right position when you're walking, the tendons are going to click over the bone. You've got to master that. Pose. You know, pose, the butterfly pose, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. But yeah, and breathe. Have you, have you, how long have you done this roller at home? How long have you been able to stretch? Well, I just did foam rolling like legs, not. Just the legs, like not the back. Okay. That's, that's okay. I don't, I don't want you, unless, you're, unless you've been adjusted, it's better to not, per se, go in there and ask your back to move because what happens is it's might, you might just move in your loose areas, not where you're stiff. Go ahead and come down another inch. Let me see. I just want to see how, how horrible or let not that horrible. Let your back relax. There you go. There you go. Let it sink. You okay? Mm -hmm. It honestly feels really good. Yeah. You want to, after you've been worked on deep tissue or having your back worked on, you make the clay soft. So now we want to put it in the better position and let it kind of harden in the better mold. We don't want to loosen up your spine and then you go sit in a car <laughs> immediately. Does that make sense? And then your body hardens in the wrong position. So we want to let your spine cool down, let's say, in the right position. That's about as low as you go for now. I wouldn't go any lower than there. Mm -hmm. I don't want it going down into the small of your lower back. We kind of stop middle back area. Go ahead and put the feet together, knees together. Let your knees rotate left. There you go. Breathe. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually you touch the ground. So see how low you can go. There you go. Let them rotate. Let that right side stretch. You okay? Mm -hmm. There you go. Then bring your knees back up. Then bring your knees right. There you go. How does that feel difference-wise? The same or? Yeah, pretty much the okay. same. All right. Sometimes Maybe the left is a little stiffer. A little stiffer, yeah. Head back for me. There we go. I was holding you in that curved position. There you go. And then relax now. There you go. Let your neck relax. It's going to feel awkward because <laughs> it's not where your neck is used to being. Your neck is used to being straight, and we've got to get it used to being more arched. That's what's going to take care of the thyroid and your shoulder and even the, that sensation down in your arm. Sometimes it might fasciculate while you're stretching because it's a stress test, so don't be alarmed. You know, when you're bending back, that does pressure some of the tissue that the nerves are in, you know, so don't... Yeah, my don't, legs are, like, fasciculating. That's, like, well, always normal. Was it doing that when we were working on you? Um, sometime. The idea is that as you're stretching, it, you know, you're... You're doing a stress test, but then later after you get off and everything's cleaned out, it doesn't happen anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, it's you're you're asking your spine to work at a higher level right now. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. All right. Any questions? You okay? Yeah. Very good. That's All right. It. Thanks, Thanks so much. All right. Wonderful. Thank you so much.